It's one of our top stories now, and the NATO Leaders Summit is kicking off in Vilnius, with Sweden finally getting the nod to join the alliance. Our Steve Sedgwick is reporting live from Vilnius and joins us now. Steve, so many questions here after this really significant breakthrough. Like, what assurances did President Erdogan get in order to unlock this? Uh, of course, what does it mean for Ukraine's bid? And ultimately, how is this also going to be received by an embattled President Putin inside the Kremlin? Good morning to you. Walk us through it. Good morning, Dan. I think they are all absolutely top questions as well. Let me just try and talk through a little bit of the chronology, because I've been following this one for quite a long while, ever since I went up to Stockholm in July last year and spoke to the then Prime Minister, Magdalena Anderson about the historic bid. Now, I just want to give our viewers a little bit of context. Finland and Sweden have been neutral for a very long time. In Sweden's case, we're talking about centuries as well. So to give up that neutrality and join the North Atlantic Treaty Organization was a huge step for both the Finnish and the Swedish, and really did increase, especially in the Finnish case, at the land border between Russia and NATO as well. The Finnish got theirs over the line back in April. No problems with the Turks, no problems with the Hungarians. But the Swedish were really struggling because of concern about uh, the, um, the PKK and, and how in some parts of Swedish society they had a degree of support. Uh, and so the Swedes had to work really hard to persuade the Turks, actually, that they weren't uh, anti-Muslim, that they weren't anti-Turkish as well. And it looks finally like this deal's got over the line. I've got to be honest, I think there's a degree of orchestration about this as well. I had a very strong indication last night that something was happening when I spoke to President Nalzada of Lithuania, who is the host of this event here as well. But you're absolutely right. What deals behind the scene? Because right up until the last moment, President Erdogan was essentially talking about, well, if we uh, allow the Swedish NATO bid, then we want a swifter accession to the EU, to which a lot of parties have been saying, hang on, these are two totally separate things. But of course, nothing separate in geopolitics, in realpolitics, so to speak. So have there been some form of military guarantees about uh, extra hardware being procured by the Turks from the Americans, for instance, as well? So very, very interesting that this one looks to have got over the line. It's not over the line yet. It does need ratification in Parliament, a Parliament which is controlled uh, by uh, the, 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 the party uh, of President Erdogan. So it should uh, then go down to Norway, to Denmark, uh, to the Baltic nations. You have a lot of NATO countries surrounding, dare I say it, uh, the Russian part of the Baltic. So that's very, very interesting. It strengthens the so-called eastern flank. And, and I talk about the eastern flank. I'll tell you what the eastern flank is, Dan. It's right here because we are 30 kilometers away, as I stand, from Belarus. Belarus is controlled by Lukashenko, who is the closest ally of President Putin on the international stage. Very, very quick word on Ukraine. You're absolutely right. All to play for there. We have strong indications that Mr. Zelensky will be here as well. What they deliver to him could be something like a, a, akin to the Israeli model of security guarantees, but I'll go into more detail of that uh, perhaps later on today and on tomorrow's show as well. Back to you, Dan.